Recently, the Kunming Metro announced its financial situation, declaring it had run out of funds, not only owing employee salaries but also on the brink of bankruptcy. Kunming, as the capital of Yunnan Province with a population of 8.5 million, is considered a major city. The prospect of Kunming's metro system going bankrupt is hard to fathom for the ordinary person, which has caused a significant stir in public opinion. Data shows that Kunming Metro had cash flows of 3.114 billion yuan at the end of 2021. However, in just over two years, a bewildering 3 billion yuan has vanished, leaving only 101 million yuan. In addition, online videos reveal that construction of the Kunming Metro Line 9, which started in 2016, has been halted for several years now. 这可能是昆明最荒凉一个地铁站，九号线马金库站点。九号线呢是昆明公里数最长的一条线路，总长度呢达到了五十点四公里，跨是贯通长水机场和高铁南站，进而带动相关区域的发展。整个高架是已经建好的，一六年开建，却已经停工了好几年。但是呢，现实的问题有两个。第一呢是昆明的债务问题，第二个呢是已经运营开通的地铁啊，现在运营强度不够，导致呢这个九号线不能完成正常的审批。Furthermore, on May 22, news broke that the contracts for the construction of Line One of the Dongguan Rail Transit, which construction has already started, has been terminated. Now, this line is a crucial connection between the Guangzhou and Shenzhen metro system. Was eagerly anticipated by the residents of Dongguan. Initially expected to be completed and operational by August 2024, the sudden halt in construction has sparked heated discussions among the public, and is expected to impact nearby real estate sales. In recent years, China has been hit with a myriad of economic challenges, including a recession, a collapse in real estate market, bank failures, significant shrinkage in exports, foreign companies fleeing the country, successive waves of layoffs and wage cuts, and a climbing unemployment rate. Weak consumption due to the lack of cash flow, high prices of goods, low social security, and infringement on human rights have led to widespread grievances and tension in all sectors of society. The central government has repeatedly asked local governments to tighten their belts and prepare for hard times, leading to a gradual halt in expansion of city subways and high-speed rail projects, which used to receive substantial government subsidies. According to Jamia News, on May 22, the repeated outbreaks of the pandemic in 2022 have affected public transportation, resulting in declining revenues for many metros. Meanwhile, their net profits have also decreased. In 2021, Shenzhen Metro's net profit was nearly 3 billion yuan, about 420 million US dollars. But in 2022, it was only 1.042 billion yuan, about 147 million US dollars. Nanchan Metro's net profit also fell drastically, decreasing by 1.49 billion yuan, about 210 million US dollars, compared to the previous year. Guangzhou Metro's net profit fell by 950 million yuan, about 130 million US dollars. Lanzhou Metro by 514 million yuan, about 70 million US dollars. And Beijing Infrastructure Investment Co Limited, a state-owned enterprise, saw a decrease of 272 million yuan, which is about 38 million US dollars. Due to low passenger volume and relatively low ticket prices, it is difficult for metro companies to maintain normal operations without substantial reliance on the government subsidies. Among the 29 metro companies surveyed, a total of approximately 110 billion yuan, about 15.7 billion US dollars in government subsidies, were received in 2022. In 2021, these companies received around 65. Billion yuan, which is about 9.3 billion US dollars in subsidies, indicating an increase of over 40 billion yuan, about 5.7 billion US dollars in 2022. China has more than 40 cities equipped with metro systems. In recent years, as metro construction progresses, the assets and liabilities of metro companies have been on the rise. Looking at it from an asset perspective, Beijing Infrastructure Investment currently have the largest scale of assets, but its liabilities also stand high at 533.8 billion yuan, about 76.3 billion US dollars. Shenzhen Metro ranks second with total liabilities of 350 billion yuan, approximately 50 billion US dollars. 
Recently, metro expansions in cities like Shenzhen, Chengdu, Nanjing, Hangzhou, and Nanning has collectively shrunk, with numerous lines being cut. According to China Business News, there has been significant shrinkage in metro expansion across various regions since last year, signaling a further tightening in metro construction. Shenzhen Metro's fifth phase plan recently went public, with the number of lines reduced from 13 last year to nine this year, and the expected mileage reduced from 226.8 kilometers to 180 kilometers. Hangzhou's Metro fourth phase plan, approved by the National Development and Reform Commission last year, has seen a cut in nearly half of its initial public-sized mileage of 299.8 kilometers. A finance article published on the renowned NetEase account National Strategy on May 24 stated that the tightening of metro construction did not begin this year. As early as five years ago, relevant departments started tightening the threshold for metro construction, proposing three demanding indicators: GDP above 300 billion yuan, urban population over 3 million, and local general budget revenue over 30 billion yuan. The article argues that even economically developed, populous, and financially abundant cities like Shenzhen and Hangzhou cannot freely expand on a large scale, let alone the average city. It is not hard to predict that under the pressure of debts, metro construction will continue to tighten, shattering the metro dreams of many cities. Comparatively, the problems with China's high-speed rails are even more serious. China's high-speed rail has long been one of the top ten most expensive infrastructure projects, losing several hundred million yuan every day on average. Passenger volume of China's high-speed rail is far behind that of metros. The annual passenger volume is 700 million, whereas the total annual passenger volume of metros across the country is conservatively estimated to exceed 10 billion. Just the Beijing Metro alone has a daily passenger volume of 10 million, exceeding 3 billion annually. China's high-speed rail has been touted as an accelerator for the great rejuvenation of the Chinese dream, proposed by Xi Jinping. On July 17, 2015, during his inspection of CRRC Changchun Rail Vehicles, Xi Jinping stated, "High-speed rail." China's domestically produced trains are indeed a strong business card for China. Following its initiation, China's high-speed rail construction has been advancing at a rapid pace, with increasing rail lines. In July 2016, the State Council of China approved the medium and long-term railway network plan, which significantly elevated the high-speed rail operating mileage target to 30,000 kilometers by 2020. It was the first time the concept of a high-speed rail network was proposed. There were plans to extend the almost completed four vertical and four horizontal network to a new eight vertical and eight horizontal network. The new network comprises eight north-south vertical corridors and eight east-west horizontal ones, almost doubling the route length. On January 19, 2021, Xi Jinping took the Beijing Jiangjiakou High-Speed Rail to visit the Jiangjiakou Competition Area of the Beijing Winter Olympics. He stated, "A successful example of a country's independent innovation is high-speed rail, which has evolved from nothing, from introduction, digestion, absorption to re-innovation and independent innovation, and now it is leading the world." However, the economic cost of China's high-speed rail is high, and the social benefits have fallen far short of expectations. In the imagination of most people, China's rail system should be quite profitable. But recent financial reports show that China's state railway group company is making a loss. By the first half of 2022, the debt had reached as high as six trillion yuan. In reality, China's high-speed rail incurs an operational loss of hundreds of billions each year. Among the 18 railway bureaus in China, 12 are operating at a loss, and the rest are barely breaking even, with little hope for profit. If this loss continues, will China's pride turn into a global laughingstock? After the high-speed rail officially started operating, the power consumed, regular maintenance costs, equipment replacement, and employee salaries, among other things, all add up to an astronomical figure. 
Currently, local debt have defaulted and local government can't afford to fill this huge gap caused by the high speed rail. Some stations were left unfinished after construction never being used, while others were shut down due to low usage and volume. The most widely known example is Xiong'an's new area, where weeds once overgrew the square in front of the station, a site seemingly distant from the Millennium Plan. Image publicly portrayed by the Chinese Communist Party. Besides the Xiong'an Railway Station, Zhijing Shandong Railway Station in Nanjing has not been open since its completion in 2010. This station, relatively small and seemingly a scaled down version of Nanjing South Railway Station, is separated from the metro station by a metal fence gate. The gate is ajar, leading to a two story building with an escalator in addition to the staircase. However, the waiting hall is in a state of a disarray, with construction debris scattered everywhere. Further inside, an open glass door reveals ticket window, a hot water room, washroom facilities, and ticket gates, all fully equipped. Netizens commented that Zhijing Shandong Railway Station is like a peculiar flower. Good looking but useless and abandoned once completed. Similarly, Jiangpu Station, officially renamed as Puko Railway Station, located in the desolate part of Nanjing City, has never officially operated since its completion in 2011 due to considerations of cost and low volume. Even in the draft revision of the Nanjing Master Plan, Zhijing Shandong Railway Station and Puko Railway Station have been deleted from the document, leading Chinese netizens to dub them the two most desolate stations in Nanjing. Furthermore, during the COVID 19 pandemic, on April 10, 2020, two zombie stations on the Shanghai Nanjing Intercity Railway, Huachao Station and Baohua Shan Railway Station, were shut down. The rail Department cited the reason as there were not many passengers to begin with and even fewer during the pandemic. There are numerous such small stations shutting down across the country, for instance, Yanzhongzhen in Yunnan province, due to underdevelopment, transportation infrastructure, and constrained growth, decided to build a high speed rail station to stimulate local economic activity and tourism. Unfortunately, the Yangzhong Railway Station, completed in 2016, has not been put into use due to its close proximity to Kunming South Railway Station and Shilingxi Railway Station. If it were to start operating, it would incur losses due to system management of operational labor cost. Experts believe that the pursuit of scale and speed in high speed rail construction has led to the overlooking of actual market demands. Resulting in wastage of resources and fiscal extravagance. But why would high speed rail in China, a country boasting a population of 1.4 billion, lose money? Beyond the impact of the pandemic, there are five major reasons. Firstly, local government officials, in their pursuit of political achievements, tend to maximize debt to invest in large projects and infrastructure, often neglecting local debt repayment capabilities. The initial investment in high speed rail construction is exorbitant, pushing the cost recovery into the distant future. Moreover, much of the construction funding for national railways c o m e from government fiscal subsidies and debt financing. Resulting in substantial debt and interest burdens after completion. Secondly, high speed rail construction is predicted on anticipated population growth rather than a steadily declining population. Thirdly, the operational cost of high speed rail are relatively high. Electricity expenses alone can cost millions of yuan a month, in addition to high maintenance costs. Fourthly, due to policy constraints by the Beijing authorities and market factors, the ticket prices for China's high speed trains are often lower than the cost price. These elements make it challenging to balance the revenues and expenses of the national railway system. Lastly, corruption is closely intertwined with China's high speed rail, which is one of the most corrupt areas in the country. Even Liu Jijing, former Minister of Railways, who most notably oversaw the rapid development of China's high speed railway, and Jiang Shengguang, the deputy chief designer of China's high speed railway, were both sentenced to suspended death sentence due to corruption. After continuous expansion of China's high speed rail network, 
noticeable signs of contraction have emerged. In 2021, China's rail construction authorities facing significant operational pressures and heavy debt burdens announced the halting of high-speed rail construction and also decided to reduce the speed of certain high-speed trains. As per regulations, if a high-speed rail line is to be built for a speed of 350 kilometers per hour, it must have an annual passenger volume of 25 million. However, apart from the Beijing-Shanghai line and the Beijing-Guangzhou line, the majority of China's high-speed rail lines do not meet the standard. This implies that they may not be new constructions in the future, and even some existing high-speed rail lines might face speed reductions. Zhao Zhen, professor of the School of Economics and Management and the director of China's Urbanization Research Center at Beijing, Zhao Tong University, wrote three articles pointing out the substantial losses brought by the operation of high-speed rail, which could cause serious strains on local finances. Zhao even likened high-speed rail to a grey rhino obstructing China's economic development. Zhao stated that the capacity of high-speed rail projects is largely idle and suffers severe losses. Even without considering the operating cost of high-speed rails, the total transportation revenue is insufficient to pay the interest on loans for the construction of high-speed rail. Zhao emphasized that China's high-speed rail debt and operational losses rank first in the world, and you cannot ignore the debt generated by the construction of high-speed rail. Xi Jinping's proposed China dream may have turned into a daydream. Xu Wenling, a senior researcher at Brown University, pointed out that a country that relies on plagiarism and overtaking on a bend cannot become the world's number one. The Chinese Communist Party tries to take shortcuts by cheating and stealing technology, but using such methods is bound to lead to catastrophic failure. The CCP will never catch up with the scientific and technological development and innovation of the United States and Western countries. Because this kind of economic development and public dissatisfaction will inevitably shake the CCP's rule, it could even topple it.